Meet Molly, Molly Tov. A fiery redhead with one plan, survive a hundred days in Project Zomboid and probably burn down as much as humanly possible in the process. The high first former burglar spawns into Rosewood and immediately shows off her fiery might by eating an entire jalapeno from the fridge. She can then start looking for a weapon, but we immediately walk into a potential cancellation. Frying pan, this seems like an issue, in all honesty, this seems like mildly sexist. The first woman I've I've, I've played with and I've given her a frying pan as a weapon. Oh Jesus. You should, you probably should cancel me in all honesty. And if you'd like to, my socials are linked in the description. Nice one. I obviously don't plan on staying at the spawn base for very long, as with a name like Molly Tov, we obviously have a very special base in mind. Yes, I do realise I am a basic bitch. But first, we got some important things to do, like changing our makeup to skull face, and finding a school bag and a shotgun on the same shelf. No comment from me on that one. I then dye my hair strawberry blonde, and make our way out into the big old wide world. Heading south, I hop into my neighbour's garden, where I spark out our first member of the undead. Then go snooping around the garage and unbelievably find a generator. Damn, this spawn might be my most blessed yet. Shotgun and a Jenny? Molly's one lucky girl. I also find a van in the driveway opposite, key still in the ignition, but sadly no fuel. So after making a mental note of the location as the map system confuses me, I continue my journey to the fire station. But as I get to its perimeter fencing, I'm greeted by a shock in sight. The place is overrun with the undead. I know what you're thinking, man surprise zombie survival game has zombies in. Is he stupid or something? And yes, yes he is. I I forgot the point I was trying to make, but a simple glance back at history will show you if I take on these hordes, it's only gonna end badly. So after sparking out another two zombies, I hop the fence and initiate step one of my plan, luring the bastards away from my new home. It's all about being calm under pressure, and I am the calmest boy in the world. At your age, most would refer to you as a man, but yeah, sure, whatever, but... But to be fair, I am actually pretty calm under pressure. I was once pulled over by the police, and even though I was doing 42 and a 30, I got out of it with calm and quick thinking, by completely submitting and taking my punishment like a little bitch. Anyway, my plans to lure them all away goes pretty well. I stamp out this dickhead while I wait for the crowds to catch up to me. I then decide to lead them into the police station, and as long as you ignore the fact I forgot how doors worked, I'd say the plan actually went pretty well. I then smash my way through a side window into the semi-safe police compound, I then pop back over the fence completing the greatest U-turn since literally any politician in history, but at least now I should have a relatively safe time claiming the fire station, although there are obviously still a few I've got to deal with. I then take a second to steal all the clothes from that firefighter zombie, it's all about protection from bites and anna. And it's at this point I'm starting to wonder if the whole draw them away plan even worked in the slightest. But in for a penny, in for battering a shit ton of the undead. Playing it safe and picking them off one by one gets the job done. Patience is a virtue, and that's not something I usually do in all fairness. But now thankfully with nothing following me, I can finally make my way into the fire station. Thankfully there's no one dead in the first room I come across, but I do find cigarettes in the desk, which is handy as Molly has a debilitating nicotine habit. In the room adjacent, she takes a sip from the water cooler, then continues the clearance of the fire station. Gratefully we find no more zombies, but she does stick on a pair of safety goggles. Molly Tov is very big on health and safety. For a woman named Daphne, after an explosive incendiary device, she's actually very cautious. Moving into the garage, we find a decent amount of tools, and I stuff my face with a granola bar and donut I find in a lunch bag in the lockers. Well, that sorted out my hunger moodle. Now I just need to find some matches so I can sort out my anxiety. Because of a nicotine habit, not because she wants to burn down a school, alright? Although that time will come. My great luck continues with my next discovery. Pipe wrench, sledgeham- Ooh! Fuck off! I found a sledgehammer? Oh my- I've never had one! That is sick. That- this is- this is a good omen, chat. This is a good omen. For some reason, I thought you could only find sledgehammers in Louisville. I guess not. I then equip an axe from the storage cupboard and drop off everything I've looted so far, so I can go about clearing the rest of the fire station as light and as nimble as possible. But there's actually no more zombies in here, which is nice. I then eat half a ham, read a newspaper, and have an early night. And I guess that's a survive day one. Just another 99 to go. Although not technically true, as Molly is a restless sleeper and wakes up at 20 to 11. So I decided to do an hour or so of exercise to hopefully wear her out a bit. Pop that ass, girl. After that, I thankfully sleep the rest of the night. Into day two, where I eat the rest of the ham from the night before for breakfast, and then watch a cooking show on life and living. Then it's on to re-clearing the area of any zombies that may have wandered in overnight. Hey, dickhead, how about you leave my fucking window alone, you prick, alright? There's also several lined up against my rear fence. I then decide to do a quick search of the house behind to try and find a can opener, as I've got a few cans of grub but no way of opening the bastards. As I enter the first home, zombies start piling through the front window, although maybe piling is a bit of an over-exaggeration. I grab all the food from the cupboards, but sadly find no can opener. Then while trying to search the downstairs bathroom, I get a bit of a jump scare. 
But even with a machete on his back, the prick doesn't stand a chance. Have some of that, you bellend. Speaking of helping, I help myself to that machete leather jacket and hockey mask. I continue my looting, but unfortunately don't find the can opener I'm after. But I got some spare tools and plenty of sheets to cover up the downstairs windows of the fire station. Then after half a morning of not even strenuous activity, Molly is bloody shattered. So we have a little afternoon nap. You know what, the end of the world doesn't actually sound that bad. But by the time we wake up, we're well into the late afternoon. I can't believe I've wasted so much daylight when I have a new machete to test out. Oh man, this machete is an absolute beast, man. Oh, fuck the axe. This machete is where it's at, ladies and gentlemen. So after thoroughly testing my new toy, my plan is to head into the police station so I can find some matches so I can finally have a smoke. The only problem with that plan being I led a horde into the building yesterday. First class planning skills, I'm sure you'll agree. The best plan I can come up with is luring them out one by one and picking them off from there. Then after clearing up a few more on the inside, I can get down to looting. In the dark, apparently. I find myself a lighter and have a cheeky smoke break before taking on another member of the undead. I then take a holster and a pistol off a corpse before completing my looting spree around the office. But I decide against moving too far into the police station for now as I don't want to get trapped inside or start to tire. So with the remaining hours of sunlight we have left, I'll try and get the vehicle in working order. The hatchback is in really good condition and has a nearly full tank of fuel, but sadly the doors are locked and there's no sign of key. The fire truck, however, is unlocked and I've got a screwdriver to do some hot wiring. But sadly I don't have time for that, which is fine as I want that duffel bag off the zombie. The fire truck also seems to be in great working order, just out of fuel. But there are too many zombies around to risk siphoning, so it looks like I'm going back to slicing and dicing. Come on dickheads, over this way. But by the time that's over with, it's getting late, we're tired and hungry, so I decide to call it a night. Waking up on day three in the early hours of the morning, I have a little wash, then sit on the floor in front of the TV, waiting for life and living to start. You gotta do what you gotta do in order to get that sweet XP, am I right? Then we can munch down some meat patties for breakfast, then head outside to complete the job we started yesterday. Getting a vehicle up and running. After siphoning fuel from the hatchback and topping up the fire truck, I stick my screwdriver in a place I shouldn't be and successfully hotwire the thing. Well, now we got our car up and running. My next Next plan is to gather some firewood, so I chop down a couple of trees out the back. I can then build myself a campfire in the field opposite the fire station. However, I'm not going to be lighting it today, seeing as the weather is wetter than an over 40s ladies night in Butlins. I chop down a third tree and stick it on the campfire for later. Then seeing as Miss Toff is once again shattered, she heads inside to have an afternoon nap. Jesus Christ, this woman sleeps more than a narcoleptic sloth. Unfortunately, it was less of a nap and more of a bloody coma, as I wake up at 8 o'clock in the evening. Well, fuck. Well, most of the day may be wasted, but let's see if we can at least get something productive done. My plan is to complete the raid on the police station and hopefully get our hands on some firepower. We get off to a good start by taking out a copper zombie with a shotgun on its back. But it seems another horde has wandered in overnight. Well, it looks like we're gonna have to sort that shit out immediately. Then things start to look bleak as I once again get tired and hungry. But against all odds, Molly fights through successfully. Now, as well as damp, hungry, and knackered, we're also out of breath. But hey, at least the doors to the armory was open, which is nice. And I'm happy to report we get an absolute steal. A ton of ammo as well as a sling to make my shotgun lighter to carry. In the next container, I get three pistols and three boxes of 9 mil rounds. Then on the end container, I get another shotgun and even more ammo. Looks like we're gonna go from surviving to thriving sooner than first expected. By the time we leave the police station, it's fully nighttime and we're seriously encumbered. Well then, the last thing we'd want to deal with right now is a wandering horde. Nah, I'm just kidding. We get back to base safely, unload, stuff our faces, then go to bed. Before waking up on day four. And we start the day off like anyone does. Reading an X-rated magazine illuminated by the TV while having a cheeky smoke break. Then finally watching Ready Steady Cook. Then it's time to nut up or shut up. You see, there's plenty in town I want to loot. But as we've seen, I don't excel in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So I've got a plan to clear the entire place safely. First, I grab myself a shotgun, pistol, and as much ammo as I can carry. And now we're ready to go to war. Although I'm bloody tired again, I'm drowsy. Alright, okay, let's go for another lie down. Well, to be fair, we can't pull off world domination if we're feeling a little cranky. But if I'm being honest, I wasn't exactly expecting our little nap to go into lunchtime. But fuck lunch, we've wasted enough sunlight this time for action. Firstly, I grab the fire truck, which thankfully has plenty of fuel in it, and I park it up a safe distance from the campfire I created yesterday. And from here, you might be able to guess where this one's going. I get the fire lit, and thanks to the logs we chopped down yesterday, we have enough fuel for over 13 hours. More than enough for what I desire. So I hop back into the fire truck, 
truck siren on full whack and head down the main street of Rosewood. If you can hear these siren zombies, you have been called upon. Everyone burst out of every single orifice, not orifice, building. You have been called upon. Now once I feel the horde behind me is large enough, I pull up near the campfire. Then obviously leaving the sirens on for maximum impact, I lead the hordes into the field and almost immediately get munched on. Oh shit, that was close. I need to zoom in. You do not realise how pissed off I'd have been if that's how the run came to an end. But I'm sure we've all had some ridiculous ends to playthroughs. Let me know some of your funniest in the comment section. And the next stage of our plan goes into full effect. And so it begins, ladies and gentlemen. And so it begins. Staying just ahead of the horde, I whip out the pistol and pop off some shots to hopefully attract the most amount of the undead. But to be honest, I don't think the pistol's the way to go here. I know what you're thinking. Guns are stupid. Well, you have an entire country that disagrees with you. I corral them around as close together, so hopefully the fire spreads. Meanwhile, more of the undead have caught up to my fire truck. Playing it as close to the line as possible, I await the hordes to set ablaze. Then, seeing as the pistol didn't seem to be working, I whip out the shotgun, which is oh so much better. Then what proceeds to happen for the next 13 minutes is me circling a field of burning zombies while I await the flames to do their thing, while I occasionally blast a load into the crowd. I have a feeling this is going to take a little bit longer than I thought it was. And I'm not going to lie to you boys, there was a few close shaves, but overall I'm putting this down as a massive success. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure we haven't cleared the entirety of Rosewood, but it is without a doubt so much safer than it was. So as we complete lap after lap of this burning field, I claim this land as a landmark in Project Zomboid history, because it was in this Field. On this day, I realised Molly Toff was a warrior, a victor, and it is without a doubt a certainty that this woman will make it to a hundred days, if not longer. Long live Molly Toff. Molly Toff, Molly Toff, Molly Toff. Molly Tov, Molly Tov, Molly Tov. So as the hours tick away, afternoon becomes evening. Molly finishes off the final zombie of the day. And as she's tired, hungry, thirsty and damp, she can make her way back home. And after an obvious amount of self-care, she makes her way to bed to rest after a very successful day. Day four. Hopefully now with the majority of Rosewood cleared out, we should be able to loot the place much easier. And I'm hoping to hit four spots in one. One being the petrol station so I can top up with plenty of fuel. The supermarket for food. Hopefully before the fresh stuff starts to rot, the bookstore so we can learn some new shit, and finally, the bar, because it's fucking awesome. Gratefully, no hordes have wandered in overnight, although a mysterious broken window has appeared out the front. Alright, I'll have to sort that out when we come back, I need some wood. Yeah, I'm sure that's nothing to worry about. Nothing urgent nor life threat, then ain't time to crack on with our shopping spree. I decide my first stop should be the petrol station as it's the furthest spot away, and work our way back in, and even though there isn't a lot of zombies around here, there is still a lot more than I was expecting. I park the pickup up shoddily, then it's time to start battering in the undead. But admittedly, my recording is slightly fucked and there's next to no game audio, so you're gonna have to put up with me making the smashing sounds. Everyone gather around, please. Everyone gather around. Boost. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Molly is a little bit panicked right now, which is understandable, given the situation that is in front of her. Splat. Ah. Ooh. Boom. It does take a little while, but eventually the final zombie does fall. Molly can then fill up the pickup, as well as the two empty gas canisters we found previously. Then, like a good citizen, I attempt to pay for my petrol, but it's fair to say the staff are a little bit bitey, one of which is backpacking a shoddy. Once they've all been bludgeoned to death with my fire axe, I start looting the corpses, getting an extra duffel bag, a hunting knife, a spiked baseball bat, and let's not forget the earlier mentioned shotgun. I then have to fight off another mini horde, which isn't fantastic as I'm a little on the heavy side. Christ's sake, why do shotguns and baseball bats weigh so much. I also decide I need this chest freezer because, well, it's awesome. I can then spend the next 10 minutes looting the entirety of the shop, even if it's 90% chocolate and crisps. But hey, what can I say? Molly's got a sweet tough. But by the time everything is safely loaded into the back of the pickup, we're starting to get rather sleepy, so I decide it'd be best to have a nap in the apartment above the shop. But before we have chance to, disaster strikes. Oh no! Right, it's okay. We didn't take damage. Then we took damage. Ah, fuck it, it is but a scratch. And a scratch has literally never killed anyone. Especially in the zombie apocalypse where medical care is completely free. But taking care of this single zombie proves to be a bit of a problem seeing as I'm bleeding, heavily encumbered and bloody shattered. I then rip up the dead guy's sweaty socks to use as a makeshift bandage, seeing as I'm incompetent and didn't bother bringing any proper medical supplies. What a moron. I'm sure I'll learn from my mistakes. Speaking of mistakes, it's time for a bloody nap. I can honestly say I hate this restless sleeper trait, someone please remind me to never do that again. We hit the hay and wake up just shy of day 5, so less of an app and more like a bloody coma. But after making and eating a stale jam sandwich from the apartment cupboards, I'm gratefully able to get back to sleep waking up this time on day 5. Although at 3 o'clock 
o'clock in the morning. But my impatient ass can't be bothered to wait for sunlight, so decide to make a move with a gun case I found in one of the cupboards. Although after storing the case in the pickup, I see through the error of my ways and head back to bed for the third time in 12 hours. A restless sleeper is a pain in the ass. Thankfully, I found sleeping pills in one of the cupboards. Then after waking at a much more respectable 7 o'clock, it's time to crack on. Ah, oh, there we go, 7 o'clock, perfect. Oh god, I don't quite know how, but the scuffle doesn't result in Molly taking any more damage. Oh my god, how did I not take damage there? What the hell are you doing in here, you bellend? With my life having flashed right before my eyes, it's time to crack on. Uh, I guess we hit the bar next. I think the bar's the next one. The bar was certainly the closest stop, however, the population is a little higher than I was expecting. So with the pickup park safely out of the way, I come up with a cunning plan. Firstly, I act like a shepherd and herd the Zeds. Well, it is in my DNA after all. Then once all of their attention is on me, I slowly back up towards the rich people houses. Hey, it's only fair, they fucked the economy. It's time to fuck up their house prices. Hop the fence and then and they should all try to work their way around, right? Then knowing the hordes will attempt to follow me around the fence, I backtrack around the back of the house and hop back over the same fence, back towards the bar. But after all that running about and climbing fences, Molly is a little exerted, and there are a few more stragglers about, so I decide to take refuge in the bail bond place to help me recover my stamina. Things start off pretty well as I find a fridge full of fresh food, so time for a little munch. But there are now zombies banging at the door and needing to handle things quietly, I do the only thing I can. By sticking a pair of scissors and a hand torch in the microwave and turning it on to maximum. Her name is Molly Tov, of course her weapon of choice is fire. Although in hindsight that might not have been the smartest thing, as I now have fire behind me and zombies in front, and no way of escaping through the middle. So I exit through the front window and it was just the one zombie. So a complete over-exaggeration on my behalf. Two more locals block my entrance into the bar but are easily dealt with, and I'm forced through the front window as the door is locked. I then proceed to stuff every single drop of alcohol that'll fit right into my duffel bag. But there's still plenty to take, so after deposited it all in the back of my pickup. Okay, that has got quite bad. Can my car set on fire? Am I being daft by trying to continue here? Most likely, but that's never stopped you in the past. Also, the car is actually rather full. Unfortunately, I can't just escape as a few Zeds have wandered through the flames and are now obstructing my way to the driver's side door. Well, if it's not the result of my own actions. It'd be a bit daft, wouldn't it, if Molly Tov wasn't setting things on fire? Thing is, that car might not start first thing, so I need to make sure there's no zombies chasing me. So I proceed to do a rather large loop around the bail bond place, and surprisingly that puts enough space between me and them, but disaster is never that far behind. Oh no, the car! Is the car on fire? Oh no! What have I done? Livestream chat assures me the car can't burn, but more importantly, there's still booze in that bar and the flames are getting too close for my liking. I try to fight through, but I'm well too heavy and the fear of a burn puts me off. So I go for another loop around the bail bonds place just as the building gets fully engulfed with flames. And thankfully the fire has spread past the car, so at least I can get the hell out of here. I guess we'll have to come back later and just hope the fire doesn't take too many precious resources. I get back to the fire station, store in the pickup inside and celebrating with a cheeky lunchtime beer. Good old drink to Molly. Hashtag not an ad, but if Pepsi want to send me a lifetime supply of Pepsi Max, I'll probably drink it dry in a year. I then spend the rest of the day sorting my inventory, making sure to store all of my booze in a single cupboard like a good alcoholic. I also found a good spot to store my new chest freezer, and by the time that's all completed, Molly is knackered, so we head to bed, waking up on day six, but barely. So I make sure to pop some more sleeping pills, because surely there's no chance of me getting addicted. But when I awake, it's still too early to do anything productive, so I sit in front of the TV waiting for life and living to start while reading Mechanics Volume 1. Then after a morning cigarette, for breakfast I enjoy a burrito from the petrol station I looted two days ago, where it sat in the back of a pickup for a day and a half, baking in that Kentucky sun. Yummy. Then it's back on my looting spree, which I started and wanted to get finished two days ago. How time flies when you're fighting for your life. This time my first stop is the bookstore, and after fighting off a small gathering that's been attracted by my engine noises, I take literally every scrap of paper from the bookstore. Like, I'm not even gonna bother checking what I've got double of. I just want everything and hoard it like I'm a greedy fat dragon sitting on a throne of books. Wait. Well, that's shit. How about I add an additional stop to my looting spree? The Rosewood Doctor Surgery, for example. Ah, yes, sitting on a throne of prescription painkillers is much more like it. After emptying another building entirely of its supplies, my pockets and pickup are once again full, so once again head back to base. I guess that's why people usually take only what they need. The time I get back is a little on the late side, so I'm back to organising my loot, and typically my bookshelves simply aren't big enough for my encyclopedia of doublers. I then cook up some fresh sausage for myself before hearing noises coming from downstairs. And you wouldn't believe it. Some fuckers come through my broken window. 
Cheeky bastard. I don't want to get blood all over my house. Boys, you've got to get permission before you come through anything. Otherwise, a red-headed Welshman slash woman with a fire fetish will bludgeon you to death with a fire axe. I then spend the night reading the rest of Mechanics Volume 1, all being soothed and illuminated by 90 static television. What a wonderful ambiance. Although admittedly, I don't quite finish the book on account of me being a slow reader, but I'm just grateful to get to bed at a normal time. Waking up on day 7, and just in time for the Life and Living cooking show. Gotta enjoy the little things, guys. While watching, I also read a few more chapters of Mechanics Volume 1 before having ice cream for breakfast and heading out. Hopefully now I can finally get to the bloody supermarket. And I absolutely can. Although sadly all the fresh food is now stale. Ah, oh, it's stale. Ah, oh, I got you too late. Well, it's a good thing there's plenty of kidney beans and dried ramen on the shelves. Probably should have searched the place. Oh god, Jesus Christ. Obviously I need to be careful for the occasional dead guy. Then with my pocket stuffed tighter than a sheep's arsehole, I better unload into my pickup. Wait too many innuendos. The last one I know there's another Zed who throws itself through the window directly at me, and before I can finish it off, see? Oh, no, 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 no. I've dropped my axe. I've dropped my axe. Shit. I can finish it off with my hunting knife, and gratefully the injury wasn't a bite, but it being on my foot means I'm now severely limited with my movement. Although rather recklessly, I still complete the loot run before heading back to base in the late afternoon. And thankfully, when I wake up on day eight, the limp has gone away, and I'm ready to crack on. And seeing as we've now survived a week, and a lot of our basic needs are sorted, for day eight, I decide we need to reward ourselves with a little fun. By breaking into the local bank and burning the bastard to the ground with the most deadly weapon known to man, a microwave oven. Down with capitalism. Burn the bag down. All right, calm down, Jeremy Corbyn. Did I think this through? I'm on the second floor. Almost certainly not. Let's be honest, thinking isn't your strong suit. Probably not. Maybe we should move. Unfortunately, however, the microwave doesn't get the job done, and there's no vault to break into, so I drop a molly I crafted from the bourbon I looted from the bar. Unfortunately, the flames didn't exactly last very long. The whole down with, like, capitalism thing didn't go too well, did it? Goddamn banking system and the vigorous health and safety policies. My disappointment is immeasurable. Probably doesn't help this currently wetter than a Welsh summer. Rule one of arson club. Don't like the fire and the rain. So I spend the rest of the day chilling in front of a black screen, seeing as the TV stations are no longer transmitting, and I'm yet to find any videos. The thunderstorm continues into day nine, so I commit to reading all of the books I've collected so far. So much so, I neglect every other feeling and physical state. This goes on for days, just reading book after book. We even missed our first helicopter event. Eventually all of my crafting skills have multipliers, so I'd say my reading days are over. Then on day 16 we can finally get back out into the real world. Having learnt many new things, Molly is ready to make the apocalypse a bitch. Although I do hear noises coming from downstairs and a zombie has entered through my broken window, which yes, I still haven't fixed. I try to move the corpse outside as I don't want it stinking up the home, but a small horde spots me dumping the corpse and really disagrees with that kind of action. So in the early hours of the morning while it's pissing down and before I've even had breakfast, I'm forced into dealing with these lot. Luckily the crowbar is a brilliant weapon, but let me know which you think is better in the comment section, axe or crowbar? The fight drags over the half hour mark, but every zombie I kill another joins the chase. So I retreat into the police compound to try and make as much noise as possible, to draw the hordes in so I can then trick them and retreat back to the safety of my fire station. Ignoring the window, that still hasn't been fixed of course. The hordes pile through the smashed window of the police station, and I head to loop around the back and jump over the fence, but there's still zombies everywhere. I'm desperately trying to fight, but I'm exerted and my hunger is building. At this point, the hordes have exited the police compound in pursuit of me, so I climb back over the fence to sit in a puddle to hopefully recover some stamina. Once I've caught my breath, the hordes catch up to me again, so I climb over the fence for what feels like the millionth time, but unfortunately my exertion comes back with a vengeance. And with the hordes everywhere, I feel there's only one option to continue. To repeat the actions of day three and use the campfire to burn everything to the ground. But I'm a fool and haven't got any fucking kindling to light it with. So I head to the middle of the field, hopefully out of earshot from the hordes and bat the three zombies. And with them dead, I can rip up all of their clothes for kindling. And to make things even better, the rain has finally stopped. I get the campfire lit just as the first zombie approaches me. And then it starts fucking raining again. Are you pissing kidding me? Thankfully, I still have a pistol in my hip holster. I let off a shot to attract everything nearby. Now it's just a case of patience and perseverance. Every time a new Zed joins the chase, I loop around the campfire and set the bastards light once more, while also unloading my pistol to attract as many as humanly possible. The fight continues for hours, but eventually the undead stop coming, and the rain can douse the burning fields. But to think this entire fight only started because I was dropping off a body, and I couldn't retreat because my base wasn't safe enough. I'm gonna have to fix this. So I board up the broken window, then rip up all the clothes of the corpses in the vicinity. Then I chop down every single tree in the back garden, because it's time to build a wall.
baby. Although that's tomorrow's job, right now I've got a rest as the restless sleeper trait strikes once again. Waking up bright and early on day 17. I start the day by clearing up some stragglers that have wandered through during the night, and refusing to lose the day to the fog, start construction on my new wall. Using the pickup to collect the materials, my plan is to build a wall across here and here, leaving plenty of room out the back for a potential farm. Although as you might expect, this takes fucking forever. But at least the sun burns through the fog in the afternoon, which allows me to be able to see shit. Very handy while collecting supplies. Unfortunately, however, my building project is forcefully put on hold when my last axe breaks, and I'm not even close to having enough wood. Fuck! Once I finish building what I can with the logs I've already chopped down, I head off to the rich side of Rosewood to hopefully loot some stuff to make my house prettier, obviously ignoring the slight fender bender en route. Although I completely forgot about the hordes I dragged there previously while trying to loot the bar. And it turns out the bar is actually still on fire, so that's great, plenty of booze I'm never going to get to drink or craft into incendiaries. So I come up with a plan to simply lure the hordes away with a siren on the fire truck. however it doesn't seem to be working. But it's not letting me. Have I, have I broke something? I think I might have broken something. Yeah, I wonder how that could have happened. Not knowing what the keyboard shortcut for the horn is, I need to come up with a new plan. But as I backpedal back to the field I've burnt down twice already, I start to question my own strategies. I shouldn't bring the zombies to the campfire, I should bring the campfire to the zombies. But first I'll have to deal with a small gathering that's been dragged here by my engine noises. And I wouldn't want to waste precious fire on a pathetic horde like this. I can then craft myself a campfire kit from the two spare logs I've got left over, and once I've collected plenty of scrap wood from the tables I've demolished while going in my carpentry skill, I have to take another nap as Restless Sleeper once again slaps me in the arse. Although waking up past 7 means this day has been a complete waste of time, so I have a wash while I still have the water on, then read a book while I'm sat on all the other books to prevent boredom. We then wake up bright and early on day 19, it's time to properly clear out Rosewood. And seeing as the siren isn't working on the pickup, I decide to walk into town as walk is a great form of cardiovascular workout, and they do say cardio is crucial for surviving Zombieland. My plan is to set up the campfire right in the centre of this intersection and lure all the zombies towards me with a shotgun. However, there is way too many zombies for that plan to come off successfully, so I'm gonna need yet another new plan. Let's see how we get on. Nope, 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 nope. Am I going to hell if I set a campfire up right next to a church, which is almost certainly gonna lead to it being burned down? Almost certainly, but that doesn't stop me from trying and failing. With that failure, I loop around a nearby house and hop the fence, and once I've dealt with a few zeds that have tracked me down, successfully set up the campfire in the middle of the intersection. I can then start yelling at the top of my lungs, come on here but I can come get me is it? Although it seems I'm not loud enough, so I whip out the shotty. And as the first hordes start to approach me, I keep on blasting to make as much noise as humanly possible, to hopefully attract the most amount of zets possible. I then run about for five while the hordes start to alight, and spread their fiery goodness amongst themselves. But rather predictably this escalates quite quickly, so again I loop around the nearby house and throw myself blind over the wall. Oh, uh, this can't go wrong, chat. This can't go wrong. No! Oh, Jesus! That almost went very wrong. Why did nobody warn me about that? I continue blasting my way through, although I didn't exactly bring enough ammo for this entire fight. Fearing I'm about to be cut off, I dip down an alleyway, and that's when I spot it. A parked up ambulance. This will be our saviour and bringer of destruction. But with no time to hotwire, I immediately go for plan B, and turn the sirens on to attract as many as humanly possible. That should drag all the zombies around, including the ones already ignited from the campfire, and hopefully cause an even bigger spread than Covid. Unfortunately, that doesn't work, as apparently I'm a tastier snack than that ambulance is silent. Gonna light the fire, let it go, let it go, let it go. And that singing voice alone just makes this entire thing so much harder. With everyone now on me, I loop around the church and rush down the back alley, like I'm a Catholic priest in the 70s. But no choir boys were harmed in the making of that joke, so I'm probably still getting into the eternal beyond. I start heading southbound through Rosewood, blasting the shotgun at the flaming zeds, while the town burns around us. Certainly wasn't my main intention, but sometimes things just work out really well. And the bank is now seriously on fire. Much easier than dropping a molly through the front window. Down 
with capitalism. After heading back to the car park where the ambulance is located, I realise the sirens are no longer on, but there's still a massive horde there and barely any flames whatsoever. So I toss a molly that I brought with me, which does a much better job of igniting the hordes. I continue to lap around Rosewood, blasting the Zeds with a shotgun, and the now fully ignited hordes stampede their way through everything. Everything this horde touches shall burn, I just need to outlast the ashes. We take another lap around town with the undead quite literally hot on my tails. That is until our hunger comes back, and I've already eaten all the food I brought with me. I guess that's what happens if we don't plan for mass arson. I'm able to make it to the supermarket just slightly north, where I find and eat a full can of oats. Mmm, 1500 calories of dehydrating goodness. But unfortunately the burning zeds have made it to me before I can escape, although I managed to sneak my way out with no issues. However, we can wave goodbye to the supermarket and anything that survived my initial looting run. Heading back towards the centre of town, I noticed the arcade is also ablaze. Not great as I was planning on pinching some stuff to make my base look pretty, but whatever, I just eat sweeties watching the flames fully engulf the place. But now we're starting to get late, so I take the long walk backwards towards base. Thankfully, we're no undead pricks following me. Honestly, no idea how nothing is following me, I guess they must have got stuck in a building along the way. Then after some very basic self-care, I head to bed waking up nice and early on day 20. And for day I'm thinking we need an even bigger fire, so I collect all the scrap wood from my carpentry grind, but now seeing as I'm out of shotgun ammo, I swap to the pistol and rifle combination. I then take the long walk back towards the charred remains of Rosewood. I light the campfire from the day before, then immediately show why the rifle was a terrible idea. But then like a blind boxer, I eventually hit something. Here we go, I got one, I got one. <laughs> I then rush back to where the ambulance was, and this time I hotwire it, but unfortunately it's completely out of fuel. A bloody shame as I definitely had plenty back at base. So time to revert back to plan C, D or E. With the sirens now on again, I start to circle the ambulance as the burning zeds from the campfire get drawn towards the bigger picture. I even fire more shots off to make the most amount of noise as humanly possible. Although I had a better chance of shooting my shot with Scarlett Johansson than making an impact with this thing. I then head northbound as the embers from the day before four start to reignite, firing even more shots off to draw the hordes from the northern section of the map. But I might as well be Darwin Nunes on benzos with this kind of accuracy. I now head south as the flames slowly take over the car park behind the row of shops. But is it just me, or the hordes starting to thin? I decide to risk eternal damnation and lead the burning horde through the church. I'm certainly not going to hell for this one. I slip out the side door as the horde makes its way through the church, and surprisingly I don't get immediately smited out of existence. Proving once and for all, God hated the architecture of this place. Absolutely hideous. I even try to get cocky and attempt to burn down more of the town by leading a few that are left chasing me through the shops and into the car park behind, but choosing the clothes shop was a massive mistake. There was no route out to the back, but I managed to keep my car and loop around the store and back out the front before any issues can arise. The final few Zeds burn off by the late afternoon, but before I make my way back to base I decide to investigate the destruction I've made, which was a massive mistake as I cut myself climbing through a window. Yet another mistake I thought I'd learned to avoid. Heading through the neighbourhood, I hop a fence back into my compound, and high on painkillers and tobacco to keep off the pain, I head to bed. Waking up on day 21. And for the day after all that destruction in town, I decided it would be for the best to take it a little bit easy, I get back to building my wall. I found an additional axe in my terribly organised storage, although I only managed to cut down five trees before it breaks. But hey, at least I got enough logs for another two sections on my wall. Now I'm almost close to being halfway there. Yeah, this is gonna take fucking forever, isn't it? With that disappointment, I have an afternoon nap, then head out in search for more axes to cut down trees or material to fix the already broken axes. I find a multitude of tools, but sadly no axes. Why does nobody have glue? Do you lot not sniff anything these days? Overall, my looting spree was decent, but not overwhelming. A few rolls of duct tape and a single tube of wood glue wasn't enough to fix either of my broken axes. I've also collected a ton of empty gas canisters for when I next need to do a fuel run. So after sleeping off my frustration, we wait up on day 22, and my plan is to loot more of the neighbourhood garages and sheds in search to get my axes back to chopping condition. Although that gets off to a terrible start as I immediately get spotted, and while dealing with the threat we take major damage. Then while dealing with the rest of the threat, anxiety rushes over my body. Was it a bite? Was my run over already? Well no, not quite yet. Just a small laceration to my lower torso, and stream chat is adamant there's like a 25% chance of infection. But not for Molotov, she's built different, no zombie virus would be causing 
person through her veins, let me tell you now. Without an axe and forgetting the sledgehammer I'm still yet to use, progress of entering garages is slow and too often the reward is too low. While hungry I break into the nearest house to grab a snack from their cupboards, before having to deal with another miniature horde, although this time was much less bleedy. I can find a hand axe in a nearby garage, although it's not ideal for chopping down trees, but at least it'll get the job done. And that is when it happens. The dreaded Queasy Moodle. Oh no. Every Zomboid player's worst nightmare. But is it from the laceration? Or did I eat some dodgy food earlier? Denial of the inevitable, I choose food poisoning as I fight off more of the undead. Now also ignoring the overheating Moodle, which is obviously because of all the vigorous fighting I've been doing. Slowly I lose grip on reality, sticking anything metal in every microwave I come across just to feel the sweet endorphins of destruction. It's now late evening so I decide to leave the neighbourhood burn while I call it a semi-successful day. Although that's being very generous if we're being honest. I get back to base and strip down to cool off, before heading to bed and waking up nice and early on day 23. Still queasy, still too hot, denial slowly turns to realisation as my mortality is strewn before me. I start the morning off with cigarettes and wine to help me cope with the inevitable. Now inebriated, the thought of my impending doom doesn't seem so bad, so I sit on the floor and watch a film while knocking back beer after beer, mixed with a concoction of painkillers to really get the buzz going strong. Now overconfident with alcohol and prescription drugs in her system, Molly heads outside for a fight. Come on, you think you are where I go? Is it that? Come on, fuck it, I'll laugh you now. Fucking everyone over here. But there was no one left to fight. Rosewood was now a crispy ghost town. Was Molly really gonna die alone? She collects a cowboy hat and boots off a nearby corpse before heading back home. She continues her alcohol abuse well into the evening before deciding this isn't how she goes out. Quivering, awaiting death, fuck that. Live by the flame, die by the flame. She re-equips her trusty hockey mask and collects her remaining molotovs. She throws the first into the garage and the second at the main building, but the spread is too slow and unsatisfied with her effort she heads back in, dropping another in the rec room then torching her bedroom, before dropping her very final molly downstairs. Uh, on the- oh god. Oh god. Oh god. There we go. <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? Live by the flame, die by the flame. Molly Tolf has dropped her last Molly, but still her flaming corpse managed to spread havoc through the Rosewood fire station. She survived 23 days of the 100 she initially planned. Not fantastic, but her chaotic arsonist ways touched us all. Rest well, Molly. Rest well.